Well then, today we're going to calibrate the axes on this little 3018 into the Gerbil program today. So the first thing we're going to do is choose uh, a suitable feed rate which is about 500 millimeters 500 millimeters per minute and one I, I want the axes to move 100 millimeters I've got the other camera set up there uh, viewing how far the x-axis is going to travel and I have a, a nice piece of wood there with some lines drawn on it and we I have a very pointy tool in the uh, in the collet and we're going to ask now the little router to move in its x-axis 100 millimeters like so And you'll see up here that it's registered okay it's moved 100 millimeters now we will check to see indeed if it is 100 millimeters so I can do this without getting my head in the way or anything okay I'm sure you can see that on the line it is exactly 100 millimeters it's moved okay so we'll just move it back so that actually tells me that it's absolutely correctly set up but we'll move it back and I'm going to show you how to alter the steps per if it was incorrect. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an incorrect number in to make it, make the axes incorrect and show you how to correct it. And what you do, you go down here to this bottom box here, okay, you see where the cursor changes, pull it up, okay, come in this bottom box down here and just type dollar sign and dollar sign and press enter now you'll find a, a row of numbers come up here this is the settings in Gerbil for this particular machine now what you're looking for I, you know it's just a, a load of numbers what you're looking for is this group here right 100 101 and 102 that is that represents x y and z axes and you'll see here that the axis is set at 800 steps per it actually relates to 800 steps per millimeter of, of travel so what we're going to do is we're going to give it a false number to show you that by altering these numbers you can alter the result in the axes. No, in other words, alter the steps. And you can walk yourself in to the correct setting. Uh, there is calculations you can do as well, but sometimes they're a little bit complex. It's easier to just walk yourself in to get the right number. So we're going to give it a wrong number in the X just to to show you. So it's dollar sign uh, 100 equals so 100 is the axis which is in this case is the X axis and what we're going to do now is we're going to say okay um, we're going to give it uh, 860 steps per. Okay, we're going to press enter. Now it may not show up on there, 
okay but that's actually logged into the program now so we can clear that and bring that back down and this now is going to travel further not too much further uh, probably about um, three or four millimeters further too far so we're going to ask it again to move 100 millimeters what the program thinks 100 millimeters up don't forget and you'll see it registering up here 100 now we'll go back to the other camera I'll actually put the other camera footage here so you can see okay so we put this on here oh actually it's gone a lot further it's gone to 107.5 thereabouts so you can see that it's actually lengthened the distance by altering that number so when I say walk your, yourself in okay to, to the correct number what I mean is you can go into go into the console here again dollar dollar enter and actually for my own interest I want to see if now this is just actually the listing so that really doesn't matter so first of all we're going to ask it to come back to the start position uh, not having changed anything that should bring us back to where we were um, the program thinks it's 100 millimeters but we know in, in, a, in fact it's 107.5 and we'll just check to see whether it's yep that's on the line exactly uh, so we're going to walk ourselves in now okay so we're going to say just for example uh, dollar 100 which is the axis equals 830 point zero 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 enter and we're going to ask it to move the same 100 millimeters and we'll measure it okay that is pretty well 104 millimeters okay so we're getting closer to our goal so it's a little bit of messing around but uh, you know it's well worth it in the end so we'll ask it to come back that uh, 100 again Just check that it has come all the way back to that line. That's pretty, pretty damn perfect. <laughs> okay, so now we go back in here to the console and go dollar sign. Um, oh, that wasn't dollar sign. One hundred equals now it's some are gonna go eight ten enter and we know it's not gonna be quite right but it's gonna be close
Well, there you go. It's it's there's that's one hundred and one millimeters or thereabouts. So you can see now what I mean by you can walk yourself in to the correct number. Um, so I'm going to ask it to come back. So it should come back now to that line. Perfect. So now we'll put in what we know the correct number is. Which is 800. And we'll move it to 100. And we'll measure it. And that is pretty perfect which is 100 millimeters. So that's how to check the axes. Okay, this is the easy way to check the axes. Um, over a longer distance, you know, I, I would recommend uh, like a, for the X and Y, that needs to be, you know, sort of over 100 millimeters. Obviously with the Z you can't do that, so it knows, you need to a round number um, like uh, either 20 or 30 millimeters and you can actually measure it with one of these and it's exactly the same process you walk your, yourself in uh, but we will check those axes now um, to see how far they are out, if they're out at all uh, they, they've got ex exactly the same um, screws uh, same motors, they should be identical. They're identical numbers in the, in the um, listing and there's no reason why they should be different. Um, the last video where I did a, uh, a couple of cuts, I did a small circular pocket and a square around it and I found oh, it's a couple of millimetres out here, there's something wrong. There wasn't anything wrong at all. Uh, in actual fact, uh, when I wrote the program, or wrote, wrote the G code in Easel, um, someone alerted me, you'll see in the comments down there somewhere, that, oh, you only ran the roughing cut, you didn't run the fin finishing cut. That could have been the discrepancy. Um, it could have been, you know? I, I thought that would only have made a you know a couple of thou difference, but uh, it was something I, I, I had to try a, another program as well, and uh, I'll run the same test uh, just to find out well what was going on, because the axes and the gerbil control is actually talking the same language, and uh, they, they seem to be exactly synced up together. Okay, so this time um, I'm going to alter, uh, let me see, feed rate 500 is okay, I'm going to bring this down to, let me see, I'm going to, I think, I'm going to ask if I can do this for 50 actually. Um, feel right. Okay. So I've, I've actually put a number in there that uh, that isn't listed. I'm going to see if it'll do 50 millimeters for me. It should do. And I'm going to do the y-axis. Oh. 
Okay. So now we will measure that. And that's exactly oop, oop, I can get on. that's exactly fifty millimeter. I mean it is perfect. So we don't have to alter that one. So I'm gonna move it back. Now the Z. Um, so put that on continuous. And what I want to do is. So I'm going to lift that up. So hang on a minute. Let's uh, change cameras here. Okay. So let's. Measure this. That looks to me like 28. I'm reading the upside down yet. Twenty-eight point eight five. Twenty-eight point eight five. I'm going to ask it to move up. I'm going to move ten millimeters up. So that should read 18.85 or thereabouts. Come here. Oh. We're going to find some way of holding this. Eighteen point eight five. It's very difficult to um, hold over the top of the camera. So I mean that's okay. It's showing me that it's it's well within uh, spec there. So there you go. Um, it's really a very easy process, uh, and I hope you understand my description of walking yourself in onto the correct um, setting. But that's how you one way of doing it. Um, you know, you can uh, do the measurement uh, more accurately. You can use a DTI, um, but really for cutting wood, uh, you know, for, for this little machine, what it's going to do, I don't think there's any need to get it any more accurate than, than that. You know, that's, um, you know, within a hair's gap is fine. Within a few thirds, you know, five thirds, even ten thirds, it's fine. You know, you're cutting wood. You're not. Uh, you're not using a a precision milling machine. Where then that matters to to get it to you know with it plus or minus a thousandth of an inch or half a thousandth of an inch even. Then that that matters. But in this case, for this little machine. Um, you know, it's it's fine. So, in the next video, I'm going to give it something, something quite nice to do. I'm going to give it a little 3D project to cut, and um, see how it goes. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video today, and please press like and subscribe, and. Uh, 
I'll see you again on the next video. So, bye for now.